okay, so this is uh, President Obama in 2016 when he uh, was starting the Precision Medicine Initiative uh, really to diversify the current uh, uh, available genetic information and genetic uh, studies. And that was a really uh, a seminal, uh, uh, really a seminal part of the advance in diversity in genetics. And you'll see how that is as I go along. And I wanted to really give you a sense of where we've been uh, from a genetic standpoint. So if you go to the 1980s, uh, the genetic sequencing, as you can see here, was really not that much. It was very expensive and you really couldn't get as much genetic uh, sequencing from a given sample uh, for the price that you were paying. And you can see how that has changed exponentially over the years. And that's even, that's, this is in, in this figure up to 2015, but it's even, even more impressive now. Uh, with novel technologies in terms of uh, cost and what you get for what you pay in terms of sequencing. So that has really allowed for the type of genetic studies that we'll be talking in this talk. Uh, and as you can see coming along, you know, just really mirroring what the prior image, you can see here an exponential increase in the number of genome-wide association studies uh, that has gone along with a greater availability of genetic sequencing. And this is uh, this figure for uh, 2012 that has grown even more since, but it gives you an idea of that trend uh, that I alluded to before. So then when we look at genetic variation, it's really the key of genetic studies, really understanding what is uh, a genetic variation uh, and what, uh, you know, what regions of the genome vary, what regions of the genome don't vary and how they are associated with whatever outcome or phenotype you're interested in. So in order to have really good genetic studies, you really need to have a very good genetic catalog of variation. So initially there were about 90 uh, genomes in the International HapMap project that were sequenced uh, to the extent that they could at that point. And they really established the first genetic variation catalog at that point. And that was used in the initial genome-wide association studies, that catalog of variation that can be then put into a DNA chip and every uh, patient's blood gets run through that chip and their DNA. And then we have a sense of, you know, for, pay, for participant A, what the genetic variations they have in their genome, for participant B and so forth. And then you get a sense of what variations in what participant is associated with what phenotype. That's really a genetic study, as you will see. Uh, going on from that, you have the 1000 Genome Project, and that, as the name implies, was the, an effort to get 1,000 genomes. So that's a big increase from 90 genomes to 1,000 genomes. So you can imagine that the genetic catalog of variation would be much better at that point. Now, there's been some very recent uh, publishing uh, uh, papers published uh, include uh, along the lines of hugely increased diversity. So, so the, the diversity now in all of us, for example, which was partly funded by the Precision Initiative by President Obama, uh, really has surpassed and has uh, made our catalog of genetic variation even better. So that's really wonderful. But I wanted to take one step back and give you a sense of what a genome-wide association study is. I know some of you logging into this talk would know uh, what this is, others may not. So as I was mentioning before, we need to have a really good catalog of variation. And uh, as you can see here, on the left, you have a situation in, with, in which you have variants uh, and you have a group that are, group of participants that are affected. You can take whatever phenotype you are interested in. Let's say that's coronary artery disease, because that's an example that's coming up, and unaffected. You can see here that there is no association and you have the uh, scenario on the right in which there is an association. So you can see here that the variants that are filled in uh, are, more, are present at a higher proportion in affected people as compared to non-affected individuals. So that's really uh, a genome-wide association study. And it really relies on a, on a really good, robust catalog of variation as, I've been, as I have been emphasizing. And when you look at uh, genome-wide association studies of coronary artery disease, that is a very robust field. Uh, and you can see all these different studies that have, this, these are now from uh, more than a decade ago, but there were very robust genome-wide association studies taking into account the genetic 
catalog, the genetic variation catalogs they had at those times. And they were really able to shed some light into the genetic underpinnings of coronary artery disease using this approach, this genome-wide association approach that I just explained. And one of the ways that uh, genome-wide association study uh, results are displayed are these uh, interestingly named figures called Manhattan plots, interestingly named after the skyline of Manhattan. I guess it could be Tokyo plots as well or whatever city it might have you. But the point of the matter is that what you have here are p-values in different chromosomes. So you'll have the uh, the significance of the association of every known variant in each of the chromosomes that you can see here on the x-axis. And in order for, in order to make a nice plot, those p-values are, are represented as negative log of the p-value. And then in order to meet Bonferroni correction, which is really multiple testing correction, because you know, these genetic catalog of variants have gotten better and better. So now we have millions of variants represented in these DNA chips, right? Uh, so then you don't want to, you want to make sure that the variants that are being picked up in this genome-wide association studies actually are not due to chance. And then what ha in order to establish that, you take the standard uh, p-value threshold, threshold of 0 0.05, and that's used in statistics, and you divide the number of variants that you looked at. So in this case, it would be several million. And then, so usually in a genome-wide association study, you'll have in this type of representation, a uh, uh, value of eight, uh, but this value will depend on how many variants were tested. And then you can see here a very robust signal in chromosome nine that is really associated with coronary artery disease. Uh, and that has been replicated in all of the studies that I mentioned to you before. So, and we will come back to this figure. So when we look at just changing uh, uh, direction just a little bit, this is the limit, the limit, sort of the limit in terms of diversity in current GWAS. So you can see here that uh, in blue here, this is the uh, uh, participants of Caucasian descent. And in this other colors here, these are other ethnicities. Uh, and you can see a, vast majority of genome-wide association studies are really done in people of uh, Caucasian descent, descent. And you might wonder, well, so what? I mean, we're all humans, you know? Uh, the variation between uh, one individual to the, to the next from a genome-wide standpoint is, is, is minimal. So what, so what is the big deal, right? So, and I'll tell you in, in just a little bit, but for now, let me give you higher kind of uh, visual, uh, visualization of the persistent bias. So if you take a 2009, so I, I mentioned what the catalog, the genetic variation catalogs were around then. So at that point, the genome-wide association studies uh, that were published, the, uh, ancestry, the European ancestry proportion was about 96%. Now, if you look at 2006, there's been more diversity represented in genome-wide association studies. And now the European ancestry is 81%. So it's uh, more diverse and with some of the cohorts being sponsored by the Precision Medicine Initiative, the NHLBI and other uh, cohort and other funding agencies, this has gotten better. Still a lot of work to be done as you can imagine, but there is a trend for improvement. And you can see the breakdown here uh, in terms of genome-wide association studies. And this is per ethnicities here. You can see the various ethnicities. And, and this is a follow-up for uh, for the, from the prior figure. So this is from 2009 and this is 2016. And again, you can see an improvement in some areas, but still uh, a, a ways to go, right? So